Hey, 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 everybody. It's your lovely Lotus Blossom Lizzie. And today we are going to be uh, doing a spot of um, sewing <laughs> because I missed it so much. Y'all know how I feel about snow sewing. <laughs> well, so before I get started, um, for anyone that is new to the channel, I always like to suggest that if these are the type of videos that you like, junk journal related, then you can hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification button so that you'll be notified when more videos like this one come out. Um, also, we are doing a, a Project 20. Well, I'm doing a Project 20, and that is doing 20 pieces of ephemera per day so that I will have enough ephemera so when I'm making books, I can just go to the ephemera and um, basically place it very gingerly inside the beautiful books that I will be um, making that's coming up soon. So today, again, I'm just going to be doing some sewing. And so I'll show you um, the cards that I'm going to be doing. So I printed out a whole bunch of things um, that I wanted to actually make cards out of. And uh, I did a lot of cutting today, just a ton of cutting. And so I'm just going to show you just a little bit. Let's, let me go down just a tidbit here so you can see. Um, I've got things kind of mixed up right now, but I am going to be doing these cards here, these botanicals. And these are so beautiful. And I just really started putting them together for a digital kit. Um, they're not yet ready for the digital kit, but... If you would like them, anytime you see something on here and um, you would like to get them and they're not in the shop yet, you can always just let me know. But what I did down below is I set up a, a PayPal link. So if this is something that you would like to get, you can um, just hit that PayPal link and then I'll send those to you. Just tell me which kit you're looking for because this one is not up yet. So I'm going to make cards out of that. And let's see, and then I have another kit, and this one is actually already up in the shop, so I had a whole bunch of uh, different types of cards that I wanted to use from this particular um, pack. And this um, is um, down below as well, and I have some um, photos, family photos that I'm going to use. Um, this one actually is not a family photo, but I have some. And then I have my um, ladies home journal kit i'm going to be doing these and these are available as well in the shop and i decided just to like just print out a bunch of stuff and then i have these seed packets and the digital kit is coming soon it's not up so again you can hit the paypal link below and just specify that you want the seed packet kit um, digital kit and i will email those to you and then I have, um, these are part of the um, mini postcards. So you actually get some that are a little bit bigger as well. So the mini postcards are already up in the shop. And let's see, those are from the seeds. These are from the mini postcards. And then these are a, a vintage photo, vintage photo pack that's printed for you. And these are not public domain. These are actually family photos. <laughs> We were talking about photos yesterday, so these are actually family photos, and these are up in the shop also. Okay, so this is some of the stuff that I'm going to be using. So I'm not going to be using any vintage photo today, but I am going to be using my sewing machine. So let me just put this up a little bit again, because it's going to be probably mostly all sewing today. So I hope everybody is doing very well today. I'm doing pretty good. And, oh, let's see. Doing good. Can't, can't complain. Life is good here. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to use some different colors today too. Um, I just decided that. I just wanted to make some journaling cards. I've been making like some smaller pieces and I wanted to, and I guess I've been making some bigger pieces too, but I wanted to kind of get going on some journaling cards. Cause I like every piece to really have some care and some love, a touch. 
touch of sewing because I don't know. I just love sewing, y'all. I'm just a crazy sewer. It makes me feel good. I like listening to the sewing machine. All that good stuff. And it just makes everything look so different and finished. So that's what I decided to do. That's what I decided to do for today. Uh, also, um, there is a playlist for all of these Project 20 ephemera making non-tutorial videos that I've been making. Because I keep saying that this is not a tutorial, but I always like to try to tell everyone what I'm doing. So let me put these cards over here on this side. And then what I'm going to do is just put my little uh, top. It's like from a candy container put that there to catch my my threads and make it makes it easier so this is what it looks like after I got done so I really like that hey miss Walker how are you doing today I'm just starting off with doing some of my um, photos here I'm just going to be making some well not making but <laughs> I'm sewing around some of the journal cards that I'm making and you know, these could possibly be something else down in the future. You, you all know how I am. This could turn into uh, some other pieces of ephemera as well. Even like tags. So, um, it's just a day of sewing, a leisurely day of sewing. I'm doing good, having a, having a fantastic day. Got a lot done. Life is good. I have to talk to one of my children today. So that's always nice. I love my kids. These photos are family photos. And they're actually available in my Etsy shop. These are just some of the photos that I have up in the Etsy shop. So these are not public domain. So I didn't go on Pinterest and find these. I think I do have one photo in here that's from Pinterest. Hey, Tanya, how you doing? And I actually have photos of Caucasian people too, <laughs> but I don't have any that I'm gonna be doing today. I know we had that, we had that discussion about African-American photos yesterday. So I'm doing some African-American photos. And these actually didn't print out as, as well as they um, needed to because I actually have to change my, um, well, put some more toner into my printer. But the good thing about these photos, when I print them out for other people, of course, they would be uh, look a lot better. <laughs> and then the second piece is um, because of the printer that I use, the ink doesn't bleed. So if someone wanted to use these in a collage and whatnot, they will not bleed if they get wet with, um, with glue. So that's always good. Hey, Roberta. Thanks for chiming in and joining us today. I pulled my sewing machine out today. I felt like it was a sewing day. And that's all I'm going to be doing today is I am sewing around. Right now I'm sewing around some photos. And I showed some of the photos right at the very beginning. I probably should like wait just a little bit for people to come in because YouTube notifications are kind of crazy. Sometimes people get their notifications and sometimes they don't. I don't really understand that. You're supposed to be able to get the notifications if you hit the bell, but I noticed that doesn't always work because I don't always get notifications. But see, you can see how different that looks with the um, with the actual edges. And in the back, you can still journal on that because these are printed on cardstock. And this is kind of a quick project too, because you know, we're going for a quick, quick. <laughs> And y'all know what? Like, I didn't really realize how much ephemera I had made. <laughs> I was trying to get a little organized today because usually what I've been doing is 
after I get done with the ephemera, I just kind of, I just toss it onto my rasp cart. Not really toss it, but it's up there. And so today I was getting a little bit organized. And man, I have done a lot of ephemera. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> hey, Rachel. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep, I got a lot of ephemera. I was like, uh-oh, it's time for me to start using some of this stuff. So I'm going to have to start working on some books. So I think what I'm going to do is on Fridays, I'm going to do like some junk, junk journaling in my own book. And I'm going to use some of these items in my own book. And then also, we got to start making some journals. I have some journals in the work, so I could at least finish the ones that I have. So I have plenty. I think I have plenty of ephemera now. Uh to at least get started but y'all know I'm not gonna stop I'm, I'm totally addicted I'm addicted to doing the ephemera uh -oh. my uh, thread tried to get away from me it does that sometimes it goes on the run <laughs> I know there's probably something something in the sewing world um, that you can use to keep your thread from like jumping off the machine and I guess if I had a better machine, it wouldn't jump off to begin with. But, you know, it is what it is. We work with what we got. For sure. So what is everyone working on today? Are you all crafting while you watch? Or are you just listening and cooking dinner? I know everybody's in different places around the world and around the US. Of course, I'm on Eastern Eastern time here, so it's evening time. But I did have a good lunch, so I'm not hungry <laughs> for a change. Cuz it always seems like I'm saying I'm hungry, right, when I'm on. All right, that's how that looks. We had a army gentleman here. And I love these photos. I use them a lot. And what's nice is I can print them out in a lot of different sizes. So I can use them like in clusters or um, some of them I can make my own little paper dolls. We talked about that yesterday too. Hey beauty. Thanks for coming on with us. And right now I'm using a um, kind of like a creamy tan kind of color thread, but I'm actually I'm gonna change the thread and I'm gonna try some green. I'm gonna I'm gonna be like wild and dangerous today. So Tanya says she's watching and eating. I'm your entertainment for today. <laughs> Makes me proud. I like watching stuff when I'm eating too. You know, they say like your um, like your mind, it gets used to that. So when it's like at a certain time of the day, if you eat the same, if you eat at the same time of day, um, then when that time of day comes and you're watching TV, you'll get hungry automatically. I don't know if y'all ever heard that before. I've heard that. And Miss Walker says she's in creation mode too. All right, let's do some of these seed packets. And I did not use any vintage photo on these. Some of these have a white, um, a white border around them, which is fine with me because every because I can still go back even over the sewing. I can go back and. Um, and put use the vintage photo if I if need be. And I just didn't feel like going through all that trouble today. <laughs> I was truly I don't know if you could call this a lazy day, but I mean I worked today. Especially trying to organize all that uh, ephemera. I got a crazy amount of ephemera. I can't wait to show you all. Show you all all the stuff that I made. And actually start putting it to use. That's the big thing. I guess we can sit up here and we can make ephemera all day long. 
but it's not doing any good if we don't use it. Oh, I like the way this came out. Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? And I'm just using just a regular, a regular uh, stitch, a regular zigzag stitch. Let's see. I'm going to do some of these cards from um, one of the packs that's up in the shop also. Some um, vintage, vintage-y kind of ma matrix. And uh, all the links are below as well. And I said in the beginning too, if you ever see anything that I'm using and I don't mention it or it's not up in the shop and it's something that you want, just shoot me a message over on Etsy and um we can uh i can get it to you and for the seed packets and the botanical cards that i'm doing today i don't have those up yet but the digitals are coming and they're not up yet so um there's a paypal link below if you're interested in getting those um you can go ahead and hit that link just let me know which one you want the seed packets or the botanicals and I will email those to you after the transaction is a complete. For now, since they're not up yet. <laughs> they are not up yet. I'm also leaving like a little bit of thread at the end because I like the way that, I like that look. That just changed the look of that card, didn't it? See, it was like plain. It looked like you just cut it out. And now... We have my focus is kind of off. Let me see if I can fix the focus. My focus is always kind of it's weird. Let's see. It's on, but I don't feel like it's focusing good. There we go. Now probably when I go down, it's probably gonna be on focus. But we'll just continue on. So this is what the card looked like before. And then this is what the card looks like now. So y'all can see. Hopefully the focus is much, much, much better. I finished. Uh, I finished the altar cards last night. Man, they came out so beautiful. I love the way they came out. Oh, you finished some bookmarks. Oh, I get my pedal. My pedal's trying to run away from me, y'all. So Roberta says she finished 20 bookmarks today. Good for you. And she's laminating pieces to be cut and sewn on the sewing machine today. So you just you just watching you you're a lurker. <laughs> That's why I call people that just watch. They're lurkers, which is fine with me. Sometimes it's okay to be a lurker. I'm a lurker most of the time when I'm watching videos, live videos. I love the live videos. Uh oh, you had something go a little bit crazy on the back there, but that's okay. Cause some of these can actually just get, um, they can get glued right onto some paper or should I say a page? So it's not that important that the back looks super good, but looks like something went kind of crazy on that corner. But that's the nature of the sewing machine. It's a little sometimey, but I still love it. All right, I'm just looking through some of my other thingies here. And let me see some of the other stuff I took out because I want to change the color. So I want to do things kind of, I'm just going to do uh, things a little bit differently today. So let's do this in this color. We'll do this in this color. And... I'll do that one in that color and I even took out some smaller pieces. I don't want to do too small of a piece though. And let's see what else we have. I have some smaller of the ladies home journal cards. And let's do one of these in this color and 
I'll do one of these in this color. Okay. Do that last. And this works well on rounded corners as well. Okay. Alrighty. Make sure the focus is working correctly. It kills me when I go back and look at the um, the replay and things are not quite right. Even though I'm not a perfectionist, I do like the, the replay to be good because, you know, nobody wants to watch a crappy video. <laughs> That's all out of focus and the sound isn't working right and ugh. Yeah. So I try to make sure it's, it's correct. And this is the perfect venue to do it because it's nice nice and relaxed to do this. I love the colors of these cards. They're so vibrant. A lot of times when I make this stuff, I have to enhance the colors because the... The um the pages and papers that get these off of are so like dull because they're so old. So this is what this one looks like. I don't know why. There we go. No, you don't want to act right focus. Might have to do manual focusing on here. <laughs> Because it don't want to act right. I don't know why. It's acting up. Yes, Roberta is ambitious just like me. See two peas in a pot. Two peas in a pot. Girl, this ain't no sewing technique, Roberta. This is just uh, sewing a zigzag off the edge. That's it. I think it's called like a blind stitch. So probably if you go on YouTube and look up like a tutorial for like a blind stitch. Um, I think it is or blind hem or something like that. I don't know. I am not a true, I'm not a for real sewer. I'm faking it. It's fake news. like a big old stamp doesn't it that's pretty let's try one of these these were like some uh, tops stamps I don't know if you all remember those see this is telling your age too because this was almost before my time where they had um, like the I think it was the SNH green stamps and they had the top stamps as well where if you collected them and then you took that when you bought things you got like the stamps it was like rewards and then you take would take them you would fill up books and then you take them to the store and then you can you can redeem redeem them for like dishes my mom said she got a lot of dishes like that but she would get her stamps from the gas station so she would actually collect collect the stamps like this from the gas station and then she would get like dishes with them of course, they do rewards a lot differently now, but I mean, it was the same premise, a S and W. So, and these are actually tops. I never seen, I've never seen tops until I got these and I was like, oh, okay, that's the same thing, same premise. See, in the back looks lovely as well. So those would be nice. Let's do this one. Yep, from the grocery store. They used to have those stamps. I remember my mom collecting them. She used to keep them like in a bowl on the shelf. But she said she did hers at, she got hers at the gas station too. So I guess other places had the stamps as well. 
And I think back then gas stations sold more than they do now too. Definitely got to change my printer ink. So I'll do that after we, after we get off today because it doesn't really take that long to change the ink. But I don't want anything to hinder uh, our live stream today. <laughs> that Because those stamps are vintage. That's why. <laughs> if you're talking about the stamps, you said they look vintage. That's because they are. They, they came from uh, real stamps. And I actually scanned the stamps in to my computer so I can I can have some. And they're actually included like in several different packs and stuff. But this is just a few of them. I actually have books of these things. All right, so this is the Ladies Home Journal. And, of course, her ink is running out on here. So, But I still felt like I could use that because <laughs> I don't like to throw things away. All right, and then we got another one here. So this is kind of a fast project also. Well, it's kind of fast while you guys are on because I had to, I printed out like about 10 pages and then I actually manually cut everything out off the pages. So I could do this. And I started kind of sticking some things into um, my junk journal so that I can start doing some junk journaling but I didn't want to do it without you all so I've just been writing some notes and stuff on paper so when I do begin I'll know what I want to put in because going through going through your ephemera stash after doing stuff like this is an eye opener <laughs> I had a well, not had, but I have a ton, a ton of ephemera, which I'm absolutely loving. If I could like throw it up in the air and it wouldn't get mixed up, then <laughs> I would do that. You know how people throw their hats up at a graduation because they're so happy? That's how I felt when I looked at all the ephemera that, I, that I've made so far. And I'm still organizing it. I'm trying to find the um, best way to organize all, all of that goodness and keep it in one spot. Because one thing that I found is that um, I have, have lots of things I can use, but they're all like in different spots. So when you don't see stuff, it truly is an out of sight, out of mind thing. I have to remember that so if I have all the ephemera in one spot when I take out the book that I have some small ephemera in or you know um, my little pouches that I've been keeping them in it makes it much better and I can see through the pouches the only place that I can suggest that you find those is going to be in a thrift store and of course it's just going to be kind of a hit or miss and i know i talk about the thrift stores and goodwill and things like that a lot but the thing is if you just like like after you hear somebody on youtube and they they, they find some good stuff at a thrift store and then you go and there's nothing there you have to keep going because they have an incredible turnover on the items that they get they get in and you just have to be on the hunt for them and then you have to find the best way to find all the thrift stores in your area is just put in google in the google maps just put in thrift and it's going to show you the thrift stores in your area and just hit a whole bunch of them and you'll see which ones get what type of items and you can ask the people that work there like if they get the items that you're looking for so, for instance, like the Ebony and the Jet magazines, you can always ask them, do they ever get magazines like that in? And if they say no or they say they throw the magazines out when they get them, you can try to work a deal out with them and see if they'll save some for you. Or if they say they never get them, then maybe you want to go to another store if that's an item that you're looking for. If that makes sense. Because that would be cool. Um, or you can go. 
I don't even know if you could go like in um, in the black neighborhoods and I, I have not found any thrift stores in the black neighborhoods to be honest. So if you can find maybe a Goodwill in that area, I don't even think, I haven't seen Goodwill um, sell any magazines. I've seen them sell books, but not magazines. Yeah, even with Goodwill, Goodwill is sometimes you have to like go all the time. That's what I do. Um, when I'm thrifting, sometimes I'll go like to Goodwill or my thrift store a few times a week. Just to see what they have because when they do get good stuff it's gonna go fast but like I said you can always get to know the people there and um, just let them know what you're looking for and maybe they can help you out and then of course another way to find things like that but you have to go to them all the time is estate sales I think the public library probably would be a great place to look because I know that um, just my little library library branch where I stay at, they have, um, I guess people donate magazines and they sell them for like 10 cents, old magazines. So that was, that's a good idea, Roberta. So I don't use the magazines myself um, because I haven't found any like that. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? That's nice. Um, if I found some, then I would definitely, um, I would use them, but I haven't really found any. Okay, I'm going to change, I'm gonna change the uh, thread on my sewing machine. Cause I wanna try to use a different green. I'm doing, I'm being wild and crazy today. I'm gonna try to use something, do something a little bit different. Cause I always kind of use that color, but this time we're going to, we're going to go outside of the box. I always put a little piece of tape on here to keep the strings from going crazy. Cause they do go crazy. All right. Going to use a little like hunter green type of color. I don't know what the real color is. Let's see, does it have the real color? No, nope, it just has a number on it. So I'm gonna use, oops, did I do this right? Yeah. Let's see if I can thread this on the first, on the first try. Cause you know, threading is not my forte. <laughs> yeah, the botanicals are beautiful, aren't they? Yep, those are getting ready. I'm trying to get things read, more things to go up in the shop. It's taking me a while. But if anybody's interested in the botanical um, digitals, there is a PayPal link below. Since it's not in the shop yet, you can still get it. You just got to hit the PayPal and I will send it to you. All right. I'm seeing double. I guess this is a thicker thread because I've been threading this thing all day. Well, not really all day, but it's not going in. Yeah, I don't know where my little threader thing is. I don't really want to take that out anyway. Hey, what's going on here? How come I'm not, not getting thread in? There we go. I think it's just the angle that I'm at. And I'm kind of far from the, um, kind of far. Oh, here we go. Man, I pulled a lot of thread through there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, we also need to change the bobbin. I'm just gonna set these over here because I may put those back in before I get finished. I got my bobbins. And 
And I'm trying to concentrate now. That's why I'm not talking. This takes concentration to do all this. All this threading and bobbin putting in. All right. Now we should be back in business. That out the way. Okay, let's see how green is gonna look. Let me. Use, I'm gonna do one, another one of these botanicals in green and see how that's gonna look. <laughs> Threading that machine. <laughs> that's the only thing that I kind of don't enjoy is trying to thread the machine. <laughs> All right, you get back up there. And yeah. You also notice I'm not changing the stitch or anything. I'm just using the same stitch. Ooh, I like this green too. I might have to use some different colors more often. Not be so blah. It's also not as forgiving as the other color because I can really see if I make mistakes with this. So I have to pay attention and make sure I, I um, sew straight. Of course, I probably could go a little slower too. <laughs> that might help a bit, but I don't want to go slower because I want to get a bunch done. I'll probably do more than 20 today. Because I did just a few before we got started so I could put it on the thumbnail. Were you all able to see what was on the thumbnail? Because that's kind of important. Sometimes the thumbnail doesn't look uh, look good. That looks good, actually. I like that. I like that green. It's, it's different. All right. And again, this has a little bit of a white border. Some of these um, pieces that I'm cutting were like misfits. But you can clean a misfit up. Oops. You can definitely clean a misfit up. Then they're not a misfit anymore. At first, I was thinking I was putting too many sewn pieces inside of the journals, but I don't think that anymore. I like it. I like my sewn pieces. They're lovely. So, that's how that one looks. And then I'll go over the white with some vintage photo and you'll never know. That it was there and the back looks lovely as well. Yeah, that green really pops on those, doesn't it? I'm going to do some more. And what I did with these when I printed them out is I, um, I made sure I left like a white border around. So I printed them on like a 60, 65 weight cardstock because I like using the cardstock. And... Then I just made sure I just cut around it so I had a white border. Or you can just cut it so that it's right on the lines too. And it still looks fantastic. Believe in that white border, it's like a, a picture frame. Yeah, this green is awesome. It's like the perfect color for this job. I was surprised I even had any green. I haven't looked in my little sewing basket in a while, so I don't know what colors were in there. That's what happens. I also um, wanted to do like make some tabs ahead of time, just just to cut some fabric. And man, I uh, I got a lot of fabric. I didn't really realize I had a lot of fabric because I had been picking it up here and there, and then of course just. Throwing it in the closet, throwing it in bins, and then today I went back through and I was like, I have quite a bit of fabric. So it's like you can never have too much, not as a crafter. 
can always have more. So that looks pretty good. I am a loving it. Okay, let's try the green on one of these little lady home ladies home journal cards. I tried not to pick pieces that were too small for this job. I tried to put um, salt on a re really small piece and the machine ate it up. <laughs> it ate the little piece up. It was like, uh, that might have been a mistake. I also have another color green, but it's, it's a lot brighter. That one I didn't enjoy so much. I think I kind of like the muted color is better. Like this hunter green, a deeper color. Maybe not muted, but a deeper color. I would do the black, but I don't have, um, I know I didn't put the black thread over here. So, can't do the black one. So, that's what that looks like. That almost looks black, but it's green. Looks pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. Let's see. I'm going to use the green. This one, this piece is from the mini postcard uh, digital kit. Which for all the digital kits, I try to also put a listing up. So if, you know, you don't have a printer, um, I can print them out for you as well. That's important. Print and cut like a print and cut service. And these postcards were from the early 1900s, around the turn of the century. And I printed them in, um, in various sizes again. So I like to have like some small pieces and some larger pieces. Hey, Truth, I'm doing well. How are you doing? We're just making some journal cards today. We're using some different color threads. We're doing all, this is a all so, all so cast today. Or show. Or I don't even know what to call it. Do you call it a show? It's not, it's not a podcast. <laughs> I'm not really talking about anything. Is it a show? I guess it's good, great for entertainment. I definitely have to make some more clusters of stuff. We talked about that yesterday too, because I'm kind of empty for clusters. I've been using my cluster, the cluster, the few clusters I made, I used. That's kind of cool. I'm really I'm digging that green. Let's try it on a photo. See how that comes out. Yes, I do, Miss Walker. I actually have an inkjet and I have a, a laser um, printer. And all the items that I print for um, for my customers, I only print on the laser because the laser printer, um, the one that I have, the ink does not bleed. So if you um, use these pieces in collages and you use a lot of glue, it's not going to bleed. Up to a certain point, I found, as you know. If you like soak your pages, of course, after a certain time, after a certain amount of time, it's going to bleed. But under normal circumstances, they will not bleed. A soica, a soical, like a musical, <laughs> a soical. And I even found that I, I enjoy watching others so too. Who the nude that sewing on camera was a thing, but it is. So these will be like some great pocket pieces. 
They're great pocket pieces and just like everything else you can use a paper clip and put them on or you can uh, stick them in a pocket put them in a tuck spot Ooh, look at that one that's pretty I like using that green faux show let's try it on this card here since it has a green border on it I could just sew until I don't have any more thread which if I keep sewing for the next few days I won't <laughs> so I'm gonna have to uh, go to um, Walmart that's where I found the best place to get thread the most economical place to get thread although I try to avoid going to Walmart as, as best I can but sometimes you know you just got to bite the bullet because you know Walmart usually has everything that you need so and this is not a sponsored video <laughs> but they usually have everything that you need especially when it's like hurricane time or something like that that's the place to be Walmart I like how that looked over the, comes over that border. Looks fantastic. Next, let's do some more of these botanicals because I think I want to use like the rest of the green. Well, do the rest of these in green. Y'all know after um after we get off of the live video, this is how much I like watching people sew. <laughs> After I get off the live video, I usually replay the, my own video and I watch it again while I'm crafting. Because <laughs> I like my videos. Is that crazy? I guess if nobody else likes it, I like my videos. Even I used to do a podcast. And when I did the podcast, I would like listen to like my podcast over and over again. I like my podcast. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I just enjoy myself so much. I don't think I'm crazy for being like that. I'm actually doing a back stitch as well. So the threads won't come out because I like how that little thread just hangs over the edge there. It's kind of cool. All right. Do another one of these little uh, botanicals. I actually just created these today. I, I was asleep and I woke up thinking about botanical ephemera. And I was like, let me let me make some some of that. That's my problem, because one thing, like, I'll go to sleep watching YouTube, and then I have ephemera on my mind, because I'm like an ephemera addict right now. That's why I have so much of it. Hopefully this week, I'll get to show you guys a recap, since I didn't do a recap of the stuff that we did for last week. But I think my recap is going to be to actually use some of the ephemera, a few pieces anyway, in my own journal, so it'll be almost like a sample journal. Because I have so much of it, it's not like I have to save it. I could definitely use it for myself. It wouldn't be any fun making a lot of ephemera and not using it yourself, right? Yeah, self-confidence is a bonus. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, the sewing supply is cheap. I even uh, saw in my Walmart the last time I was there, they had Cricut supplies in there. So if you have a Cricut machine, they actually had Cricut supplies. And you know the prices were lower than any place else. Just a tidbit. They make it just a tidbit so you feel like you're getting a big savings. But it's still lower nonetheless. But 
I'm pretty much done buying mats for my cricket though. I'm like resticking them myself. You want to see the construction? Well, I just did like a series on junk journals and actually the playlist um, link is below in the description as well. If you want to see how I make a junk journal from, I actually have a journal right here too. I don't know if I'll be able to show y'all with this in the way, but here's the journal. I got the, let's see. So I made this junk journal and I did it like in pieces too. So I think it's like either four or five videos that show you how I made the cover um, or how I constructed the cover, how I um, did the inside of it, how I picked the pages and how I decorated the edges of the pages. I have really not started using this yet. Yep, another playlist. So playlists are good to have. I love playlists. I love watching playlists because um, once you start it, it'll go through like the whole thing. So that's nice. And that's one of the playlists on how to make a junk journal. There's actually another one. If you um, if you do a search for Liz for a day on how to make a junk journal, there's another one that I did last year uh, of a smaller book. And I made it a little bit differently than this one. So you'll get to see that. And in the upcoming future, oh, I forgot to turn this back. In the upcoming future as well, I'm going to be, we're going to make some together. But I have some that I already have made, and I just really need to finish some. So what I'll do is probably um, kind of do some on, on here and finish some as well. Oh, there we go. It tried to get away. I have another escapee. You're not gonna escape, people. <laughs> Uh-oh. I heard something hot. Sometimes it does that. I don't know why. I know it skipped a stitch, but for this application, it really doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it got a little crazy for a minute. That's okay, it's just paper. If it messed up too bad, I could always throw it away and start over again, but that's not likely to happen with me. Because <laughs> the front looks magnificent, so... I can just paste this all the way down and no one will ever know the difference. It looks beautiful. Why, thank you. I have some um, covers that are, I have lots of covers that are done, but I have some that I'm specifically going to start working on. And I have some really big cards too. I love leaving the white around here. So, and it's not even like an even border, but it still just looks really beautiful this way. So even though I've been doing the Project 20, I'm still, um, I'll probably like put some days aside for doing some actual junk journaling and actually junk journal making as well. So don't worry, we're gonna start, you can start seeing that too. I was doing some mixed media on the channel, but I think people rather well, wanted to see the junk journaling more, so I haven't been doing any mixed media on the channel lately. But sometimes some mixed media kind, mixed media techniques come into play when you're doing junk journaling. Her to skip a stitch again. I already know there's a page in my um, in the junk journal I just showed you that I'm gonna be probably doing some watercolors on, cause my junk journals never have any white pages when I'm done. Sometimes you don't even know what the page was before I get done, 
after I get done with them. So I go to town. Yeah, Tuesday mornings is the joint, isn't it? So that's that, this one is so big I can't even get it on the camera. <laughs> It's a nice big card. I like that. I like having the cards in different sizes. Mixed media is just about picking up some paint and putting it on a page. You don't even have to be an artist. I have some mixed media, um, mixed media videos up as well. Because I am definitely not a uh, expert at it but it is a lot of fun there's a lot of things that you can use that's a, a whole nother crafting rabbit hole to go down I'm just I'm just warning you <laughs> it's another rabbit hole a lovely lovely crafting rabbit hole I must say but it goes hand in hand with the junk journaling too because you can do a lot of mix like I said you can do a lot of mixed media techniques in your junk journal book the pages just lend themselves to that so just keep on watching my channel you'll see some junk journaling junk journaling mixed media stuff going on because that is how I roll that one these are some yummy cards if they were food I would eat them <laughs> let's try something different okay so here's some more this is like a whole uh, roll of those stamps which is kind of cool I like these stamps so I'm making this into a journaling card too all these my intention is well they're gonna be stored as journaling cards but they may they may not live their full life out as a, a, a journaling card in the end they might become something else but right now they're just getting some love some junk journaling so in love from the love queen <laughs> queen Lizzie, queen elizabeth Because my mom would kill me if she heard me say Lizzie. She doesn't like that. She doesn't like my name to be Lizzie. She said she didn't name me that. Give it a little back stitch to tell. And I almost feel like the... Um, the stitching kind of gives the paper strength too, especially if this was a pocket, it would be harder for um, the pocket to rip if it has some stitching around it. So that can be used as a pocket. See, another idea. Yep, I'm a Tim Holtz kind of girl. I am a We Are Memory Keepers kind of girl. I'm a Cricut kind of girl. <laughs> you name it, I'm that kind of girl. Now what I should have did with these little pieces is change this stitch and make it like a smaller stitch because they're I don't want the stitching to like take over but let's just change it and see. Ooh, it's real little. I kind of almost missed that one. I think I'm gonna go back to the bigger stitch. That stitch was too small. This might end up being a cluster so I can um I can cover that up, cover up my my little flub there. It'll be a lar larger cluster, but I think it will be okay. These are some pretty ladies. I love these cards. Ugh. There we go. That one. All right, let's do a seed packet. Oh, look, I didn't cut this one. I think there's a few in here that didn't get any cutting. Ugh. So let me cut this real quick. 
because I cut a lot of stuff today with my scissors. I was a manual kind of girl today. <laughs> All right. Let's put her on. Pattern pieces are your obsession. I got a few pattern pieces, some vintage ones. I actually made like the inside of a cover with one. Actually, my very first um, vintage junk journal had the inside of it. I decoupage the um, the pattern piece inside. It felt so buttery. It felt like leather. I'm definitely going to use that technique again. It was wonderful. I love the pattern pieces as well. Just the paper, the tissue paper is nice. Hey, Tamika. How's it going, lady? How's things over at your channel going? If you guys like beauty stuff, you have to go check out Tamika's channel. That's that green, y'all. Green. It's looking nice. Check out Tamika, Tamika, Tamika. All right, let's do, let's do one of these pieces here. One of our little map pieces. Got a thing for Atlas map pieces. I love them. And these are so colorful. So colorful. I'm dying to count and see how many I got, but I'm just gonna wait until I get wait until I get to my time. My hour before I count. Because this is a fairly easy project, but it did take me a little, it probably took me like an hour to uh, maybe 45 minutes to cut everything. So I guess you would have to add that on to your time. <laughs> yeah, the colors and the scenery and the texture. Exactly. That's one thing that I love about junk journals is there's like so many things going on in the book. I love all the textures and the colors. Look how wonky that is. That really skips some stitches for some reason. I'm going to have to look that up and find out why my machine is skipping stitches like that. Because it's doing that a lot today. However, I am doing a lot of stitching today. So it probably it might be something normal. And of course, the percentage is very high. The more you stitch, the more you start seeing weird stuff. But I'm not going to let that stop. I have so many ephemera ideas in my head. Y'all have no idea. It's crazy in my head right now. This was like the best thing I ever did was to start doing my Project 20. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Let's see which way. Not oh, this way. Look at those crazy stitches. It looks okay on the back, but it's just a little just got a little crazy. Oh well, that adds character. <laughs> uh, the tension. But it's not doing it for all of them. Like it looks pretty much like the tension is okay until and then it just kind of just drops a stitch. It's kind of weird. But it probably is the tension, because you know what? I never change the tension. I just leave it. 
um, leave it in here. But and also, I always use this weight of paper too, Roberta. So I know you said it's the different weights of the paper, but this paper is 65 pound paper, and I always use 65 five pound paper in here. Sometimes a little less, and then I know I can tell I need to change the tension when I use like um use it less. Oh, uh oh, missed the paper. So I don't know if that's it or not. I need to like play around with the tension though because I, I never change the tension I should. I like, well you know what, uh, the 65 pound paper, I guess it does add a little bit of bulk. Um, but because I like to do so many things with it, I like the stiffness of the paper. And sometimes like the regular copy paper is just a little too light for me. I don't I just don't be feeling it. So anything that I print is usually on cardstock. I, I usually don't ever print anything on um regular paper. Cute. Hi Marin. I just went for it um, and I was and then I started collecting as I went because I was um, so Marin asked me like when I first started junk journaling did I collect things first or did I just kind of go for it I'm gonna tell you I'm a go for it kind of person because you could plan for your whole life and never get started <laughs> Anything that I do, I usually do it like in pieces, like wh whatever I got, that's what I'm going to start with. And then as I go along and I find things, then I'll start adding that in. And um, because otherwise you just you will never get you'll never get started because you can make a you can make a junk journal out of some uh, paper out of some regular copier paper which which my last junk journal was regular copy paper I got it on my desk too I can show y'all because I am almost done for the sewing for today let's see let's see where we are on time we got like two minutes I'm gonna sew for two more minutes and I'm gonna show you my old junk journal that, that I made out of paper it took me 10 minutes to make that junk journal but if you want to make like the, you know, the big ones that you see everybody doing, I would say use what you have and just start collecting. And then, you know, by the time, probably by the time you get finished with it, you'll have more and more stuff. We're about to sew some stuff together. Because so I printed two copies of these. Even like with my, um, when I started my Etsy shop as well. I just pretty much, I started with like a few things in there. I didn't really know how to work the shop and stuff. And I just, I winged it as I went. Because um, that's how you learn how to do stuff. As long as you don't feel like you're going to mess anything up, which you can't mess anything up in doing junk journaling. There's, there's no way. I just say go for it. That's my motto in life. I was like, I want to be a junk journaler. I'm just going to start doing it with what I got. And you'll be surprised at what you already have that you can use. You have to be creative. Because it's going to be your own style anyway. So you can look at lots of people's videos and stuff. But really, junk journaling is going to turn into, it's going to evolve into your own style. So I got all these these neat little um, knickknacks and stuff is because uh, I've been doing it for a while. I've been doing the junk journaling for a few years now. And I've been making the books and stuff. So I just and I also um, I go to thrift stores a lot too. And whenever I go, I'm always thinking about junk journals. Wherever I go, I'm thinking about junk journals, and I know. Um, I even picked up like free magazines, you know, sometimes you can find free magazines and free newspapers like at the, for instance, at the Chinese restaurant. 
sometimes they'll have like um, those free magazines and newspapers and they're in Chinese and I love the way the Chinese writing is and I'm pretty sure there's no cursing in those newspapers so <laughs> so I would pick up some of those and I would put some of those in my junk journal so you have to like be creative so I'm always looking for things uh, inexpensive ways to do the junk journals because you can go out and buy a lot of stuff but there's just a lot of ways you can like I said be creative that's kind of cool <laughs> you got a paper obsession so you probably have enough to start a junk journal <laughs> if you have a paper obsession all right I'm gonna do this last card which has way too much white on it but I'm just gonna cut off part of it and I'm gonna leave the rest because I don't mind the white part. And then we're going to count up and see what we have. And I'll show you my last junk journal as well. So if you all are still on. Or if you're coming on on the replay. Because this is recorded live. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up before you leave. I always ask that you give the video a thumbs up before you leave. Of course if you're enjoying it. And that would be greatly appreciated. Every little bit helps. All right. Move my strings out here. Okay, this paper right here was uh, nothing. It was just a white piece of paper top printed on it. So that's that one. Okay, so let me. Put you guys up here. And let's move this out the way. Because that's all the sewing I'm, I'm going to do while we're on. Ooh, I have to use some muscles. Let's, let's count and see how many we have. Because I actually I still had like a big pile that I didn't do. But that's okay. I didn't count them. I just cut like a whole bunch out. And let's see. All right, so we have, I'm trying to read and count at the same time. <laughs> yep, Miss Walker says her um, favorite place to collect stuff is the Dollar Tree. A very good point. The Dollar Tree has some very good items there. Let's make sure we're focused. My focus is off again. There we go. I hope it wasn't like that through the whole video. I'll be mad. <laughs> Let's see. I'm missing the chat. So she said that she would get calendars and stickers, construction paper, children's book pages, stencils, children's flash cards, and popcorn bags. I hadn't thought about the popcorn bags, but yep, you can just walk the aisles and just find stuff. And sometimes you'll walk past things because you're not going to think of... Um, Things that you can use your use in your junk journal till you get further along into the junk journaling journey. You recently cleaned out the craft section. <laughs> they always have good stuff. I remember I was at the Goodwill and they had like this huge stack of construct. Not construction paper, but I think it was craft paper. And this lady came up and she was looking at you. She's like, oh, man, you got all that craft paper. I gave it all to her because I was like, I don't need all this stuff. So I gave it to her. She was so happy. It was a huge stack and it was cheap, too. And then when I got home, I wish I kept it. <laughs> but I didn't need it. I'm, I didn't miss it. All right. Let me count for real now. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, there's our 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 
39, 40, 41. I sold four, I sold all of these while we were on. So I had some more pieces that I sold, I don't know where they're at. So um, I had these pictures, which again, these are family photos. Let's see, we have some seed packets, map pieces. Can y'all tell I just like going through my stuff? <laughs> Those are all together. I just like going through. These are my favorite though. These came out so good. They're lovely. I love these little cards too. And of course, there's a journaling opportunity on the back. And you could definitely um, use these as pockets too. I love these. These came out so good, y'all. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, this was quick. This was a quick one. And I did 41 pieces. 40. And I still have like all of these that I can do. I don't have to, but you know. You know me. I'm an overachiever. Alright, so... No, it didn't take that long. So this was easy because um, the only thing I had to do was just print them out, cut them, which I cut them before I got on so I it, it would look easy. <laughs> I cut them and then um, then we just sewed around them. So this is pretty mindless, right? This is a mindless one. So let me show you, since you guys were asking, this is the last junk journal I had. And I actually haven't, I was going to do a final flip through and I haven't done that yet. Because I've been busy doing ephemera. <laughs> and so this book was just. Um, it didn't look like this when I put it together. It only is one signature. And the cover is cardstock. So if you're a crafter you get cardstock. So this was cardstock. And you can see I've been opening and closing it. And it still didn't crack on the side. So this was a nice weight cardstock it was white on the inside and I put some um, music pages in here and I lined it with the music pages did I do music pages in the back nope I took some scrap um, magazine pages and it just has some pretty colors and I kept it and I put that on the back and then I went from there like you probably can't tell what the original pages were this was a recipe page this page right here was a white, this page was white. This was white page. This was a kid's, um, a kid's workbook page here. This page was from some book. I kind of left the, this cause I like the picture on there. So you guys are getting kind of a little bit of a walkthrough. <laughs> this was a white page here. This whole page was white. This was white. Um, I don't know what this was. Oh, this was a piece of a book. This was a white page. So you can see after I got done, this was a white page. This was a workbook page. This page was a white page. Doesn't look white anymore. Then we have a dictionary page. This was a kids encyclopedia page. Dictionary page. Something sticking. Got a little envelope there. This page, this was a white page as well. And this is a workbook page. This is an atlas page. So I guess there was an atlas page somewhere near the front too. See, I can't even tell. This was a white page. This was a book page, you can't tell. This was a white page, this was white. I think this was a white page, yep, this was a white page. I'm so cute at the beach, y'all. <laughs> so, I, what I was meaning to say here, see I got distracted. <laughs> it does, in a way, I think it's kind of a mix it's more junk journalish than a glue book. You know what? I just, I didn't even know glue books existed till like about a month ago. And I was like, what the hell is a glue book? Um, but 
this is more junk journaling. Of course, it does have things glued in it, but glue books have like just a massive amount of um, magazine pages in it. And I don't have any, I don't have, well, I won't say I don't have that much in here. I don't know. Anywho, I would like to think this is more junk journalist. <laughs> so let's see, background stuff. So I love this book and I love the weight of it and I love the feel of it and the textures and all the stuff that I have hanging out of it. And it's very junk journaling, <laughs> very junk journaling. I have lots of junk in here. Look, that's a tag off of uh, my cousin's clothes. She was here. She took it off. She said, I know you like this stuff. So she gave me the tag <laughs> anyway. So that's the tag. So, um, before I get off, so what I think I'm going to do, cause I haven't really started using this book. Um, there is a link below to the playlist for how to make a junk journal. It has this one in there again. And so you can, it has like all the parts. I actually just started throwing some stuff in here cause I'm going to start using it. See, I had, I did this. This was a card that I did, um, that I did offline. So I'm going to make some more of these cards as well. And I already journaled on it. So I made a journaling spot on the back and so I'm going to start using some of the stuff. Here's another card that I made earlier. Mm -hmm. I stuck it in one of the pockets. We made these pockets together. And here's a little envelope. I make these by myself. <laughs> but I don't need any more envelopes, so we won't be making those. I think I made these with you all. So I'm going to put this in here. So nothing is glued in. I was just kind of, I was playing around today to see where I was going to put things. So in a few days, we're going to start decorating with this here's one of my um my thingies hey vanessa my uh and you know what in case y'all want to know the weed flowers still look the same they are not rotting or anything because i checked them <laughs> the weed flowers are okay so i didn't even do like a walk through this book it doesn't really there's the pages are not decorated the only thing they have is a little bit of lace on these and then I'll be ready to go. That's all I need. This was a big, see, it's a big card. See, it fits perfectly in this tuck spot. I love it. These cards are a lovely. I'll probably be making more. But anywho, so that's going to be it for today, you all. So we made, we made 41 of these lovely cards. And I want to thank all of you for coming on with me. Um... If y'all have any questions, let me know. You can check out the links below to the playlist for um, how to make the ephemera, which is not tutorials. It's just us hanging out together. <laughs> and then the other tutorial on how to make a junk journal. So there's like, I think, four videos within that. And then you can check that out as well. So I am going to go ahead and shove off. I had a really good time. And I want to thank uh, Rachel and Miss Walker for coming on. Tanya and Roberta. Also Beauty. And I know I'm not saying like you guys full screen names, but you know who you are. <laughs> and Judy and Roberta. And also, let's see, did I miss anybody? I have to go through. Try oh, and Truth. Can't miss Truth. Because truth is always hanging out. And Vanessa, I haven't seen you in a while. Vanessa and Tamika. Y'all have to check out Tamika's channel because she has a beauty channel now. So check her channel out. She might have something over there that you all will be interested in. And oh, and, and Mirren. I forgot about Mirren. I'm still going through my little chat here. <laughs> And that's about it. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow with that. I'm going to say love, peace, and hair grease from your sweet Lotus Blossom and lovable Lizzie. Have a fantabulous day and enjoy life.